Start a story. Adopt a shelter or rescue pet today. Your perfect pet is just a click away at the Shelter Pet Project. Every Friday, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Every Saturday, 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Real artists, real talk, real live on BeExposedRadio.com. I was meeting with a friend yesterday, and I've gotten to the point where don't ask me a question because the truth is going to come out. Exactly. Just don't do it. If you ain't looking for the truth, don't come to me. Don't do it because (laughs) I, I... I can't hold my tongue and she wants to be this uh, stylist uh, boutique but you're not doing anything right. in that nature and I can't take you seriously mm-hmm. if you're not doing those things and I understood why people didn't take me seriously because I found myself in, in somebody else's lane I was good at what I was doing right. and what I wanted to right. be but I wasn't doing it for me so how can I ask you to take me seriously mm-hmm. if if I'm living in somebody else's shoes and nobody can do what you do and I think that that's a big problem that um, people face now like you see what somebody else is doing and you to do that when that's not your lane that's not your lane that's not what you're supposed to be doing but it's popular it's getting that yeah. person money is getting that person applause oh i want applause right. i want money let me stand over here behind them and then a lot of times people aren't honest with themselves either like i was thinking earlier today and i've been woke for almost two days so <laughs> So you get honesty, yes. <laughs> and I was thinking like, you know. The Artist Exchange Radio Show. Whoa. The moment my son saw a redwood tree. It's huge! Is the moment I knew that for him. You can't even see the top of that thing. Even the sky has no limit. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Learn about forests near you and discover cool things to do when you go. Your moment is out there. Find it at discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. You use tearless baby shampoo because it's gentle on your baby's eyes. You make sure his toys don't have any sharp edges. You always test the bath water to make sure it's not too hot. You taught her what to do when the smoke alarm goes off. You make sure she wears a helmet when she rides her bicycle. You put on his sunscreen, even when he's embarrassed his friends will see. You do so much to keep your child safe. But are you using the right car seat for your child? Is your child facing the right way in the car seat? Is the seat too big or too small? How do you know when it's time to move your child into the next type of seat? Car crashes are a leading killer of children ages 1 to 13. Protect your child's future at every stage of life. For information on the right seat for your child, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. That's safercar.gov slash the right seat. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Why is Connor having trouble focusing in school? Having trouble finding Connor's middle school? Would you like directions? No. Why is Connor having trouble focusing in school? Finding lowest airfare to Istanbul. No, I'm, I'm tired of fighting with him over homework. Home, walk, restaurant. Need a review? No, I need help. He's very smart, but his mind wanders. He's disorganized. I think I understand. Oh, good. Finding best potatoes for french fries. No! Russet. Fingerling. Yukon Uh, Gold. Why don't you understand me? Sorry, I was trying to show how Connor feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. For the one in five kids with learning and attention issues, this is what life can feel like. Explore understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues designed to help your child thrive in school and in life. Understood.org, because understanding is everything. Brought to you by understood.org and the ad Listen to this flashback of Skyline Radio Show. So where we at? Maybe talk about the effects and what's going on in these schools. Yeah. <laughs> and what people don't understand. Mm-hmm. Um, just real briefly, I just want to talk a little bit about what people say um, bullying is or is not. <laughs> so bullying comes in many forms. It's a teasing, it's the cyberbullying, it's the texting, it's the phone calls, it's the posting of pictures and people's personal information um, to pretty much cause them harm, to have them feel insecure. It's the sex assaults that people actually put out there. There are physical um, assaults and there are mental assaults and emotional assaults. And what I like to remind individuals that any aggressive behavior towards anyone that is unwanted and unwarranted in an individual actually to stop, stop. Mm-hmm. Let's stop there. Stop. 
and they should be respecting that. Respecting that and right. respecting mm -hmm. yourself because when you're able to respect another person, you're able to respect yourself. Right. And the way that you're able to show that respect is that you know that you have a gift and you know you're uniquely made and that you matter. And then you also acknowledge that the next person beside you matters as well. Right, right. You know, mm -hmm. and we lose that sometimes. Bullying is a behavior that underestimates the lives and legacy of you. Mm-hmm. I'm sure when they was bullying me and I'm sure when they was bullying you, they didn't understand who you're going to become later on. I didn't know. How. Right, because I'm mm -hmm. popping. I can't pop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me tell you, all those people who felt like they wanted to say whatever to me, look at me now. <laughs> it's like, no, y'all don't understand, but I've been through some things, okay? Yeah. And you know what? No, no, no. I, I, I applaud you and I salute you because a lot of times we do not take the time and say, I'm okay and I'm okay with me and there's nothing wrong with me and I'm mm -hmm. amazing and I'm blessed and I'm strong mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I matter. Join us every Wednesday at 7 p.m. for Skyline Radio Show only on BeExposedRadio.com. <laughs> Driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Green light. Hey girl. School zone. I'm getting hungry. Car changing lanes. You want to meet me for pizza? Stop sign. Intersection clear. Yeah. Street. Pizza sounds good. Ball in street? Girl in street! <gasps> It's hard to concentrate on two things at once, like texting and driving. Stop the text, stop the Rex. How will you stop texting and driving? Tell us at stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. My name is Ruth Rusi. I'm a retired teacher. I'm 91 years old, and this is how I live united. I say retired, but not really. Once a week, I read books to children as part of United Way's education program. Reading to a child creates links between language and literacy. It creates a bond between grown-up and child. And believe it or not, it prepares them for a better academic future. Oh, we read about frogs and flies and pigs with wings, all sorts of juicy stuff. It's a joy to watch all those little faces. I figure I have the time and they have the need. And I've always believed that if we're not here to help each other, then what are we here for, really? My name is Ruth Rusi. I help kids prepare to succeed in school. So I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Go to Live United. You are listening to BeExposedRadio.com. Welcome back. Welcome back, good people. I'm your host, Coach White. This is the Conflict Resolution Show. This is another Sunday evening where I'm truly honored to be a part of your conversation at dinner time with your family. I always say on the show, that um, this is a time like no other where we really need to get together with our families and start breaking bread together. And, and let me ask you a question. How many of you actually come to the dinner table with your family, with everybody breaking bread together to have some real conversations, talk about some current events and things of that nature? We at a time where most people are, they're getting their dinner, the kids are going to their rooms or we at the table and everybody's looking at their cell phones. This is a time like no other where we need to at least establish a rule in your homes where the dinner table is going to be a place where no cell phones are permitted. We're going to engage in conversation with our kids. The kids are going to engage the, engage the adults. And I'm hoping that this show, um, considering that this is a Sunday evening, will give you the opportunity to have these conversations with your, with your kids. So, again, I'm your host, Coach White. I'm always, always grateful to God to be here with you yet another Sunday. Um, thank you for joining me. I hope that you will call in and be a part of the conversation today. 
Again, the phone number is 410-702-5657. That's 410-702-5657. So, I um, always like to begin with uh, a couple of announcements. So, um, I guess the first thing I'm going to mention is that, as I say every week, if there's ever a topic that you want to discuss maybe in a different form. Maybe this is something that you want to talk about at a conference. Maybe this is something that you want to talk about in seminars. If any of these topics pertaining to conflict resolution intrigue you, I would encourage you to reach out, send me an email at Darrell White, that's D-A-R-R-E-L-L, white like the color white, dot C-R-S, conflict resolution show, at gmail.com. Send me an email. I would love to talk to you. I would love to to help you um, and minister to you because um, this is my ministry. My work is my ministry. Um, so let me know how I can be of any assistance. I'll also, if you haven't uh, liked the Conflict Resolution Show page, please do so. I have posted some recent videos um, because I am your holistic personal trainer. Uh, my emphasis is not just the body, but it's the mind and it's the spirit. So I posted some uh, some workout video clips um, to give you an idea of some of the things that, that I do and some of the things that I, I encourage my clients to do as well. But again, when you see it, don't be discouraged. I always encourage people to work at your own pace. I'm not a personal trainer that's out to kill anybody. Because that would defeat the whole purpose, right? So uh, just check out some of those videos. Also, I want to encourage you, um, if you've seen any of the previous shows, give me a review on the page. You know, give me some feedback. Let me know how you like it. Um, your feedback is, is really, really, really appreciated. And I encourage you, like I do every week, to share this message. We want to be over 200 views this week. We're still floating around the 100s. Um, but my goal is to get us around 200 views, so please share the page. Um, we have a very exciting show. Um, so that's pretty much it for my announcements. Um, I will say um, that <clears throat> it's very important for me to recap the show last week. So if you didn't hear the show last week, um, I encourage you to go on the YouTube. You can look up the conflict. <clears throat> excuse me, the conflict resolution show. Um, and I always put in dash be exposed radio. That's the umbrella uh, for the show. Check it out. Uh, we were talking about interpersonal conflicts. We were talking specifically because that's the general. We were talking specifically about um, coming up in this hood culture. So how do you survive the hood culture? Or how did you survive the hood culture? Um, was the question that we were dealing with. And the brothers that I had on were really powerful brothers. Their stories are very impactful. My intent for the show last week is to let you know that there is hope. There is hope in our, uh, in our neighborhoods. There, there are, there's a lot of hope in our communities because God is still there. God is still present. He's still sovereign. He's still on the throne. And if you hear their stories, um, man, I just remember um, very vividly just them talking about um, Sean in particular, Sean Marshburn, uh, the youngest of the two brothers, was sharing that. He remember <clears throat> there was a time where his mom looked at him. We thank God for the praying mothers in the community. And she looked at him. And she said, something is not right about you. She she confronted him two times before he left out of the house and said, something is not right about you. And not even 30 minutes later, 30 minutes to an hour or so, or whatever, he was incarcerated for attempt murder charge or murder charge. Um, hearing the stories um, and we, when we talk about the hood culture, we talk about what well, we had a conversation about um, Greg Washburn, he had mentioned how he was uh, breaking into stores and stealing guns. He mentioned about having his gun at, at eight, his first gun at age 11. 
Um, he mentioned about um, being shot over the course of years, being shot 13 times, having his throat slit. Um, he talked about his family background, his father coming, coming, into, coming to, to uh, visit him in jail um, and saying some things that were very impactful uh, to him. He talked about his 20 something years of drug use, but yet there is hope because God is still faithful. And now he's working for uh, Safe Streets. Um, so he talked about that a little bit at the end of the show and how he passes out resources in the communities. Um, and his, his, um, his solution, as he mentioned, um, was that people really come when they want to come. His job and our job is to really give people information and to really stay on our knees in prayer and praying a prayer of faith, but constantly doing the work of just giving people resources, uh, reaching out, telling them there are alternatives. Um, and then when, when they decide that, as we said last week, you know, somebody, I don't know who coined the phrase, coined the phrase, sometimes you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, then you will come, right? Um, he talked about how uh, <clears throat> many uh, different scenarios and situations he faced that were life-threatening. Um, he talked about having, a, having forgiveness. He had shared, um, and I don't know if, if we were talking off air or, or on air, but he shared how a gentleman he shot ended up being a, a good friend of his, and they end up forgiving each other. Very powerful, very powerful testimonies that were shared last week on the show. And I can't say this enough. I thank God for a praying mother. Uh, thank God for even praying fathers. I know some of you fathers out there are praying fathers as well. But we got to continue to pray for our hood culture. Um, but just praying alone won't do. We have to make sure that we are in the cities, making sure that we're doing work. Again, giving a big shout out to the Boots on the Ground uh, street organizations and, 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 and community organizations that are out there doing some really good things on the streets. Um, we want to get to a place where we recognize, um, and I had a, a brother on a couple of weeks ago as well, young brother, he was talking about how he would go uh, to and from school and some of his friends were getting beat up and assaulted. And he had decided to go into, and I will never forget this story as long as I'm on air. He was 12 years old, got his first knife from a corner store. And um, he said he thought about getting the knife at one point, but he didn't, he didn't actually get the knife until he saw somebody else around his age buy it. He saw how easy it was. So he purchased this knife and he talked about how he's having this conversation with his friends about, well, when will we use the knife? When will, when will we think that the use of the knife would be acceptable to us? What will warrant us using this knife? So him and his friend is going back and forth about, well, if, if it's three guys, will we use it? If it's five guys, if it's seven guys, will we use it? And they came up with a number and they said, okay, if it's X amount of uh, guys, that are beating us up and assaulting us, then we'll pull out our knives and use it. But this is the mentality of the hood culture. We have to um, protect ourselves um, at all costs. So um, just listening to that story and meshing it with uh, the Marshburn stories, um, if we don't know how real it is now, then we definitely need to open our eyes. Um, and what I wanted people to walk away from uh, the conversation is you can be in the hood, but not of the hood. And there's a difference between the two. And I posed that question to Greg Mossburn, Sean Mossburn, both of them agreed. Um, I had Brother Tony Roberts on a few weeks ago as well. He agreed as well that you can be in the hood, but not of the hood. I, I will say this and I will say this again. You do not have to sell drugs. You do not have to be involved in gangs. Those are choices. So um, I just wanted to leave that out there. We could go to a break in about 30 seconds, but when we come back, 
We're going to transition. We have a great, great gentleman with a, a wealth of knowledge, Mr. Mark Rifkin, who's going to be on, and we're going to be talking about community conflict again, diet, diabetes, and heart disease. So please stay tuned. We'll be right back. You are now listening to Just a Bit Outside, a sports radio show at BeExposedRadio.com. Come join us every Monday night from 8 to 10 p.m. on YouTube, Facebook, or BeExposedRadio.com. Um, so we had a lot of things uh, going on. Mother's the, Day, Major League weekend. Baseball, pink bats, yeah. pink outfits. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they certainly did the mothers. Um, the mothers, good. They don't show them justice. Um, like Jimmy said, the pink bats, um, cleats, um, all types of pink highlights um, in the major leagues. Uh, the Orioles um, were swept by the Kansas City Royals. Wah, wah. The Kansas City Royals. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Kansas City Royals is like they are like one of the worst teams in the in, in the uh, major, major league leagues baseball. right now. Yeah, so that that was a little uh, that was a little tough. Yeah, so the Orioles no longer For have the, the top record. It belongs to the Washington Nationals now. Yeah, yeah so that yep. was tough. So hopefully um, they'll get back on track with the next series. Um, uh, Maryland, we got some local sports uh, collegiate to report. Uh, the Maryland lacrosse. Let's shout out the Maryland lacrosse team. They um, are in the NCAA tournament and they hey this is mark just a bit outside on beexposedradio.com listen to us every monday 8 to 10 p.m on facebook and on youtube we're rewarding you for something you already do listening to us it's radio loyalty and it's an easy way for you to get free stuff all you do is sign up go ahead and click the banner now you'll learn points as you listen points you can trade in for great products and services in the radio loyalty store you can earn even more points when you share your favorite station with friends on facebook and twitter radio loyalty it's free to sign up so click the banner to join now hi i'm lavar burton and i'm proud to be a book person how do I choose a book? Sometimes it's the cover, sometimes it's the title. I guess I'm pretty visual. If a book's really impressing me and the writing is really good, I will peek and see what the last paragraph is because the endings of books should rock you. I am a book person. And if you're a book person to read to a child and spark a lifetime of ambition, join me at bookpeopleunite.org because reading is fundamental. A public service announcement brought to you by Reading is Fundamental, Library of Congress, and the Ad Council. Just a bit outside radio show. Um, there is one glaring stat that uh, I read about while watching the games over the weekend. New York Yankees went 22 straight innings with at least one strikeout. Really? That's a major league record for the postseason. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's an interesting statistic. It is, it is. You know, and then when you think about it, it's like, okay, you know, that to me that's like – a big reason why, you know, they're losing right now. Hi, I'm LeVar Burton, and I'm proud to be a book person. How do I choose a book? Sometimes it's the cover, sometimes it's the title. I guess I'm pretty visual. If a book's really impressing me and the writing is really good, I will peek and see what the last paragraph is. Because the endings of books should rock you. I am a book person. And if you're a book person to read to a child and spark a lifetime of ambition, join me at bookpeopleunite.org because reading is fundamental. A public service announcement brought to you by Reading is Fundamental, Library of Congress, and the Ad Council. Green light. Hey, girl. School zone. I'm getting hungry. Car changing lanes. You want to meet me for pizza? Stop sign. Intersection clear. Yeah, street. Pizza sounds good. Ball in street? Girl in street! <gasps> it's hard to concentrate on two things at once, like texting and driving. Stop the text. Stop the wrecks. How will you stop texting and driving? Tell us at stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Well, Jason, I've got to tell you, you're pretty much everything this company is looking for in an entry-level candidate. Great. Your resume isn't quite what we're used to, but you've got a fantastic work ethic. Thank you. And I'm impressed by how you carry yourself. So, should we talk about the job? Uh, what? The job? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I have no way of recruiting or even meeting you. This interview didn't happen. It may sound ridiculous, and that's because it kind of is. 
There's a huge pool of talent your company is missing out on. Meet the grads of life. Who are they? Talent worth knowing about. Young adults of unique determination and experience. An ideal fit for your company in an entry-level position, internship, or even mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. Man, we really could have used him. Don't miss out on a resource many innovative companies have already discovered. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool of... You are listening to BeExposedRadio.com. Welcome back. Welcome back, good people. Again, I'm your host, Coach White, your holistic personal trainer. This is a show where uh, personal training is redefined and conflicts are resolved. So as I said during the first segment, we are transitioning into our topic of today, which is, again, community conflict. And we spoke about this once before. Uh, we're speaking specifically about diet, diabetes, and heart disease. Uh, and I'm going to introduce you to a fantastic gentleman, Mr. Mark Rifkin. I'm glad that you had the opportunity to come out and join us today well, on the show. You. Thank you very much, Coach White. Uh, I always appreciate <laughs> the opportunity and um, uh, kudos to you for having the yeah. show and inviting me to come on. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I hope you won't be a stranger because <laughs> we definitely could use your insight and your expertise. So I'm going to give an analogy and I'm going to transition. Uh, so here's a, here's a story that I read on one of my previous shows. So a man was walking down Dodge Street, and for many years, he and his family had been traveling this road in hopes to live their best life. Uncle died from complications with diabetes. Father died young from heart disease. Grandmother died from colon cancer, and his grandfather died from a stroke. On this road were all things that were that they were accustomed to. Chicken boxes, half and halves, pizzas, subs, fries and burgers, sodas, alcohol, chips, chips, etc. One day he met a doctor on this road and he told him that if he continued on the same path, he would become diabetic. So the doctor showed him another road that he could travel called Life Street that could significantly decrease his chances of becoming diabetic. And on the street were all the things that he wasn't accustomed to. Kale, squash, spinach, chickpeas, fruits, water, greens, etc. The doctor told him that his decision could impact the future generations of his family. The man told the doctor, although I appreciate the advice, I could get hit by a car walking on either street and die. The doctor said that's true. But you can't control the person driving the car. You can't even control whether you'll live or die after you get hit. But you can control which street you choose to walk on. The man said that's true, but walking on Life Street is way too expensive. I can't afford that. The doctor said Life Street is much more affordable than the medical bills that you'll pay on Dodge Street once you become a diabetic. The man walked away from the doctor, continued on Dodge Street, and eventually died due to complications with diabetes, and his sons walked on the same road. So, I wanted to share that analogy. It's one, like I said, I shared before. But the moral of it is, if we keep doing the same things, we'll keep getting the same results. And we keep making excuses, but pay attention to your investments. We'll buy $30,000 cars that depreciate in value as soon as we take, take it off the lot. But we won't make the necessary changes to invest in the future generations of our families. We're so comfortable with rationalizing our decisions by saying things like, I can eat right and get hit by a car, focusing on things you can't control. But here's the other problem with that statement. You're thinking about you and not your family. So... Again, welcome. Um, again, I'm here with a, with a great man with a, with a bunch of knowledge. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to you and get your thoughts on the analogy and, and share any information that, that you may have for us today. So thanks. Um, yeah, I, I wish we'd all have, have a dollar for every time we've heard that I can get hit by a car. It, it doesn't really matter what I do with how I live my life. Yeah. Um, we would all be 
fairly wealthy, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've been asked to check your mic. Um, yeah, we're on. Can you hear him now? We good? You, you can just keep talking. Okay. And we'll, we'll let it flow. I, we apologize for any interruption. We'll just flow, and so, then we'll make the appropriate uh, adjustments. So, so, as somebody once said, you know, we need to control the factors that we can control. Yes. And leave the other factors to the wind, so to speak. Yeah. We can't control other people, how other people drive. True. And if we're, you know, if we're going to get hit by a car, at least we should present the best and healthiest body we can to, to the mortician. Yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. But, uh, but of course, we're far more likely to be victims of our own, shall we say, mis misfortunes. Okay. And you keep flowing. We'll keep calm and say he'll, he'll readjust. As, as opposed to getting hit by a car. Yeah. So, and of course, the, the number one killer of Americans pretty much across all populations is cardiovascular disease. Heart yes. disease. Yeah. Um, and even though, you know, certain other diseases get a lot more attention, heart disease is still the number one killer. Um, and in, in many cases, the first symptom of cardiovascular disease is death. Yeah. The first symptom. The said. first symptom. is, wow. is In other words, people don't know they have a disease uh -huh. until they have a heart attack or a stroke. Wow. And which, unfortunately, I think a heart, heart attacks kill... Um, you know, untold numbers, millions of people every year. Yeah. People don't, don't even know they have heart disease. Hmm. Wow. That's that's pretty. Uh, yeah. That's that's very shocking. And so, and of course, with a stroke, where you know you're less likely to die, but you're more likely to be debilitated. Yeah. Because your your brain has basically been um, in, deprived of oxygen. Yeah. So people lose swallow functions. They lose the ability to control their bowels. Yeah. They can't eat by themselves. They can't walk by themselves. Mm. Um, and so actually, my father had a stroke. Wow. And it wasn't it wasn't a pretty sight afterward. Wow. Yeah. Um, so um, and of course. Now, again, now we can't control all factors that contribute to heart disease. There's still a genetic component, okay. but we can control about 90 to 95 percent of it. Okay, okay. Talk to me a little bit about that, about how, what is controlled and it look like. So, so there's several primary risk factors. Of course, we know smoking is one, mm -hmm. um, and which is, of course, not related to diet and exercise or lack of, okay. which is not related to diet. But... Um, but what is related to diet is being overweight or obese. Okay. Um, having high cholesterol. Okay. High blood pressure. Yeah. And high blood sugar. Okay. And I'm going to come back to the blood sugar. Okay. So and then so those are the things that we tend to have too much of. On the other side of that coin is what we have mm. too little of. Okay. Such as fruits and vegetables. Mm. And the lettuce on our burger doesn't count. Okay. <laughs> Um, even though people think it does. Yeah. Um, whole grains and beans. Okay. And, um, and I, I personally think that beans are probably the missing link okay. to most of the chronic diseases that are afflicting us and killing our, our loved ones and killing us. Yeah. And if I had to pick one food, it would be beans. Mm. And I any, will any specific kind of beans or I will accept any kind of beans except for two. Okay. Those are coffee beans and jelly beans. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. That makes sense. <laughs> the, those yeah. don't count. Okay. But okay. and any other bean like chickpeas or northern beans, navy beans, lentils, split peas, black eyes, black beans, any bean. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. Um, unfortunately, most people don't eat beans often enough, as mm -hmm. we all know. Okay. Um, and unfortunately, they're associated with certain unpleasant digestive effects. Yeah. Um, but we can work around that and actually mitigate that and to the point where eating more beans actually produces less digestive effect. Okay. All right, so we're going to go to a break. We, we're going to continue the conversation when we come back. Again, this is the Conflict Resolution Show. Please give us a call and be a part of the conversation. We'll be right back. Um,
So, Jacqueline. Yes, Mom? I wanted to talk to you about something, and... Oh, wait. Hold on. I just got a text. Oh, there's another one. Wow. Busy, busy me. So, anyway... Oh, wait, Mom. I just got a message. My friends keep commenting on my comment. Oh, there's another one. So many comments on my comment. Oh, I can't wait to watch TV tonight. Playoffs! Hey, guys, check out my new video game. Pew, pew. Wait, wait. Mom, what? Huh? What? Hold What'd on. you say? Wait a second. What? This weekend, unplug. Take your family to the forest. There's nothing in the world like experiencing nature firsthand. Trees, paths, bluebirds, streams. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. To find the forest nearest you, go to discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Here's what you missed on Salacious Life Radio. You know, when it comes to your children, especially if you're dating someone that you actually like, like, like actually like, you do want to, you want it to work. So right. you're going to hope and encourage the relationship between your child and that person because you like that person, you know, so you're going to hope for the best. I mean, sometimes, yeah, it just doesn't work and you can't make it work. You can't. You are listening to BeExposedRadio.com. People, again, this is the Conflict Resolution Show. I'm your host, Coach White. And please call in to be a part of the conversation. The number is 410-702-5657. It's 410-702-5657. So, Mr. Mark, can you tell us, uh, talk a little bit about the fools that can lead us in the wrong direction and that would potentially warrant heart disease? Sure. So, for the most part, processed meat, uh, high fat meats, unfortunately, which tend to dominate our diets. Okay. So, hot dogs, sausage, bacon, scrapple. Okay. What about lunch meat? Lunch meat. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so this old adage, you know, I guess maybe it's a new adage about everything's better with bacon. Yeah, your heart attack is going to be much, much better with bacon. Oh my goodness! <laughs> um, it's, it, it, and it's sad that people have latched onto these foods, and you know, and we all grew up with this. I grew up with many of these foods myself. Yeah. Um, until um, you know, certain evidence came to my my uh, my, my vision, and I I saw it, sat and thought about it, and I said, mm. you know, this is not right. And all those conditions that you read about. In, in your in your in your presentation earlier, yeah. th those are all in my family. I've got a stroke, and my my father had a stroke. I've got colon cancer in my family. I've got um, multiple cases of diabetes in my family, heart mm -hmm. attacks, cardiovascular disease. It's all the same stuff. And what, what was your what was your wake up moment? What was the point where you said, you know what, well, I got to change? Um, well, it was really mostly from an ethical standpoint is where I first got my okay. my exposure and then from there it turned into a health uh, motivation and mm -hmm. and of course when you see multiple relatives dying literally like one a year mm. wow every time I turned around I'm going to another funeral yeah um, so and you know what did what did he die of or what did she die of oh you know she had a heart attack or you know she died of kidney disease or yeah okay, somebody's got to eventually put two and two together yeah. and come out with four. Yeah. And, yeah. but, um, and, you know, to some extent we're relying on guidance from physicians who, by their own admittance, have not been thoroughly trained gotcha. in nutrition gotcha. and lifestyle in general. Yeah. And so what we're seeing is what, what I compare to is we're relying on gatekeepers who only have a limited number of tools in their toolbox. Mm. And what they know are the two tools that they do have, which are drugs and surgery. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, you know, even though most of these conditions are thoroughly preventable and, and in many cases treatable with lifestyle. Yeah. But the only tools that the, most physicians have are drugs and surgery. Mm -hmm. And so when the typical patient goes to a typical physician, well, the physician might wish for the patient to really lose yeah. weight and start eating right and get some exercise, stop smoking. Yeah. 
but the physician doesn't have the tools and the resources to provide to that patient and really sit down with that patient for what could be one to two hours. Yeah. And yeah, most doctor visits are about 15 minutes. So, so I'll, I'll, and I'm speaking on behalf of the viewers when I ask this question. Are we even going to the right people? If they only have two two tools in their toolbox, are we going to the right people for the for the for the right answers? Well, in some cases yes, in some cases no. Okay. Some physicians are starting to realize that there are many other tools out there. Okay. And even though they were only trained on two, yeah, um, they're starting to realize. Oh wait a minute, you know, exercise really does matter. Lifestyle really does matter. Even yeah. meditation, yoga, yeah. stress management. All of this matters. Yeah. And wait a minute, I as a physician, I'm, I'm not trained in stress management. I don't know anything about diet and nutrition. Yeah. So, but the key is that they know, they should know enough to refer to a specialist. Yeah. Such as myself, I'm a registered dietitian. Yeah. For, obviously for, you know, for physical activity, they should be referred to a personal trainer. Yeah. Um, for stress management, maybe a psychotherapist. Yeah. But too often, well, you know, Mrs. Jones really got to lose weight. You didn't lose weight since the last time I saw you. Well, you know, maybe we should consider bariatric surgery and right. cut, off, cut off two thirds of your, of your stomach. Oh my goodness. Because, well, you couldn't lose weight. Well, now you're diabetic and now your blood pressure's through the roof. And yeah. well, if we, you know, cut off part of your stomach, well, that'll solve all your problems. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> and of course that Theoretically, it can work. I, I can't say it doesn't work, mm -hmm. but it, uh, more often than not, it presents far more problems yeah. than it solves. Yeah, and who wants, who wants the, that extreme, you know? Well, unfortunately, a lot of people don't want to take the long, slow road of diet and exercise. Very true. They, they want the magic bullet, they want the magic pill that's gonna fix it tomorrow. Yes, that's very true. And yeah, if you, I, I, I have, I satirized that example with my own extreme, mm -hmm. I could chop off your leg and you'd lose 75 pounds in one day. Yeah. Is that the kind of weight loss that we want? Mm, no. not, not really. I wouldn't think so. Yeah. That's right. But it, it does work. You would lose 75 pounds yeah. in one day. How about that? Um, so, but obviously, so the goal should not be weight loss at any cost. Mm -hmm. It should be effective weight loss. Yeah. That is also supportive of other aspects of a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. Not just, you know, cutting off a part of your body simply because it's no longer convenient. Yeah. That's, you know. I'm with you, I'm with you. So, now there, of course, there are extreme cases where, you know, somebody who weighs 700 pounds really does need bariatric surgery. Yeah. Um, but for the average patient who's 250 or 300 um, and whose life is not at immediate risk Mm -hmm. from another chronic condition yeah the answer is not surgery yeah the answer is diet and lifestyle awesome. but but the physician again doesn't have the tools in his toolbox yeah to help that patient yeah. lose weight eat a better diet does does, does, the, does the does the physician really know how to cook black beans mm. probably not yeah yeah and so so if you're if you're a person who if i'm saying um Mr. Mark, I really don't like beans. <laughs> any, any suggestion for the, the people who don't like beans? Yes. So the, the key is to, to delve into that a little bit and find out why they don't like beans. Okay. Is it the digestive effect? Is it the flavor? Or is it the texture? Okay. And okay. it could literally be any one of those or a combination of those. Okay. So let's put aside the digestion for a moment okay. and focus on the, t to the texture and the flavor. So I will admit... You know, if I had a choice between black beans and french fries, <laughs> it's probably not going to be the black beans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but I also know that if I flavor those beans, yeah. I will enjoy those black beans as much, if not perhaps a little bit more, than, I, than I'm going to enjoy those fries. Yeah. So, one of my favorite recipes, um, five ingredients, uh -huh. a black bean sweet potato quesadilla. Oh my goodness, that sounds delicious. And if I can do it, I guarantee anybody can do it. Yeah. Because I'm I'm not master chef. You don't need to be a master chef to do this well. Yeah. You just need to be able to boil water, open up, you know, um, a, a cookbook, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so, mash your black beans, 
add any flavor salsa you like and spread it on a, on a whole grain tortilla. Mm. Mash sweet potato. Yeah. That's been baked. Yeah, yeah. Drizzle with molasses. Okay. Spread that on the other tortilla. Okay, okay. Put them together, make a sandwich, grill it in a pan, about five to eight minutes aside. That sounds simple to me. Sounds simple, and you will wonder where this absolutely divine pleasure has been all of your life. Yeah. So you've got this little combination of sweet mm -hmm. and spicy. Yeah. And I, if you're tuning in today, I'm going to challenge you by tomorrow. Try that. I guarantee it's good. I'm, I'm licking my chops <laughs> as you describe it. <laughs> I'm getting excited. But again, to be a part of the conversation, call in at 410-702-5657. So talk to me a little bit about somebody who may be a borderline diabetic. What can I do right now that can help me in my situation? So, so for somebody who's borderline diabetic um, or what is known medically as pre-diabetic okay and, and actually we're trying to move away from adjective terms to to more toward people oriented language so okay it's a person with pre-diabetes okay. okay um but it's sometimes i fall into that trap too but um so the first thing is to to pinpoint exactly what are their specific lifestyle um factors that are increasing this the patient's blood sugar okay um is it because they're skipping meals they're eating too much carbohydrate um, are they eating too much fat which can hurt your body's ability to manage that blood sugar mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, is it simply being sedentary okay so in some sense I, I, well I'd like to point out the example of Michael Phelps okay 2008 Olympian in his first Olympics in 2008 they showed him eating lunch Okay. And his lunch would occupy half of the table we were sitting at. I believe it. <laughs> and, and literally, it was probably, I would guess, well over 2,000 calories. Wow. And he was eating it for lunch. That was just lunch. Yeah. Wow. So, and of course, he's six foot five or six foot six. Okay. 195 pounds. Lean. Lean. So, why could he eat that much food? Mm -hmm. Because he was going to go burn it. Yeah. So, in essence, we could eat the whole world of calories if we can figure out a way to burn it. Gotcha. So that's just addressing just the calories and the blood sugar part, not yeah. the other parts of the quality of what you're eating, but just in terms of the, co the calories and the carbohydrate. Yeah. So if we can't eat like Michael Phelps if we're not going to go exercise like yeah. Michael Phelps. Gotcha. But gotcha. So, so that suggests in some sense it's a balance between what we're eating and how much we're exercising. Okay. So, and if, so even if Michael Phelps, say, broke his leg, mm -hmm. the next day, he darn well better eat less. Yeah. Because now he's not swimming. That's right. It makes sense to me. So, um, so and then I'm going to ask about, you know, what kind of food is on your plate, and then as well as the volume of food that's on your plate. Okay. Okay. So, now I'm looking for a plate that's half vegetables. Gotcha. And again, well... Iceberg lettuce, we'll call that a vegetable in name only. It's not really a vegetable. I got you. I got you. <laughs> um, so, so I'm looking for a plate that is literally half broccoli, cabbage, onions, mushrooms, peppers, spinach, uh, beets, um, cauliflower, um, uh, uh, spinach, zucchini, squash. Yeah. All of that. Sounds great to me. Um, and, and, and probably my least favorite, one of my least favorite vegetables, celery and radishes. Um, but, they, but they still count. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So, and then the other half of the plate is evenly divided protein and carbohydrate. Okay. So, unfortunately, the typical American plate tends to be the reverse of that. We have a large pile of carbohydrate yeah. and a large pile of protein. Yeah. And then we have this cosmetic amount of vegetables. Yeah. And we were trying to be healthy and well, we chose the low fat chicken breasts and well, we, you know, we chose a low sodium pasta sauce to put on this mountain of spaghetti. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, that's not really going to do it. Yeah. 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 So, so it's, it's, it's basically, we have to look at the volume that we're eating. We also look, have to look at the quality of what we're eating. How much does a food, will a food journal help me out? Like if I were to write down what I'm eating and how I feel and associate the two. It could help you a lot. 
Most people don't really realize how literally how much food they eat in a day, in a day. And there have been studies done where people who who are supposed to eat for in a certain way, but are eating in a certain setting where their their residue has been re the residue of what they're eating has been removed, eat more food mm. than the than the people whose residue is left on the table. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. And this and this one researcher also did a study with soup bowls, and the soup bowls were. Um, hooked up to a soup tank okay without the knowledge of the people eating the soup okay okay so as they ate the soup the bowl would fill up so <laughs> it would never really the, the food the soup would never really disappear yeah and they ate like 42 percent more soup wow simply because there was always soup in their bowl yeah therefore they cannot possibly be full yeah so they're eating with their eyes instead of with their stomach That's right. and their brain and really thinking about, oh, am I really full or am I just eating because there's food in front of me? Yeah. Wow. So, so if we write down how much food we're eating yeah. and, and what we're eating and how it's prepared, then people probably will, a lot of people, your audience will be in for a shock. Yeah. Um, which then of course calls into you know who is preparing our food mm. is it some guy whose symbol is golden arches mm. is it some guy whose symbol is uh, you know some some guy with a white beard and a goatee <laughs> yeah. um or some guy whose you know symbol is a crown yep or you know the the local chinese carryout guy who's selling you uh, 10 chicken wings for three dollars mm. um mm -hmm. so you might say you know, their, their interests are not necessarily our interests. Correct. Their interest is to make money. Yep. And if you happen to be healthy in the process, well, that's fine. But if you don't happen to be healthy, well, they got what they're after and that's your money. That's right. That's so, right. Um, so even if somebody doesn't adopt all of the changes that we're going to talk about today, I would recommend cook. Okay. Even if you're not vegan, even if you're not vegetarian, cook at home, please. Yeah. More. Um, you know, it's not to say you should never eat out. Yeah. But the average American is, is eating almost literally half of their food out, away from home, prepared by somebody else who does not have their best interests at heart. Yeah. Oh, man. And that's, that's not a good model. No. Mm -mm. That sounds scary. Well, I think we're seeing the effects of it. Yeah. Um, you know, as you know, right now we're in the midst of another debate, yet another debate about healthcare. Yeah. And, um, and you know, and there, for me, and for many people who are in my circle, per, healthcare starts with prevention. Yeah. Doesn't start with treatment. I hear. I hear that. I hear that. So, and and to some extent, the system. For the most part, devotes lip service to prevention. Okay. Um, you know we're going to you know provide free colonoscopies. Well, it's great to detect a colon cancer if you have it. Yeah. But as much money and resources as we devote to providing free colonoscopies, we should put that into preventing colon cancer. Absolutely. So that Absolutely. maybe we detect less colon colon cancer when it is present. Yeah. But so to me. A colonoscopy is what we call secondary prevention. Yeah. Primary prevention is preventing the disease. Absolutely. Secondary is preventing it from getting worse. Yes, sir. So, and of course, a colonoscopy can't tell you you don't have colon cancer. Okay. Because okay. They, they miss. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Well, I hope, I hope you all have that information. Um, we actually, Greg, go to a break. The next five seconds or so. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. Exchange Radio Show every Friday, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Every Saturday, 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Real artist, real talk, real live on BeExposedRadio.com. Um, I was meeting with a friend yesterday, and I've gotten to the point where don't ask me a question because the truth is going to come out. And exactly. Just don't do if it. If you ain't looking for the truth, don't come to me. Don't do it because <laughs> I... I 
I can't hold my tongue and she wants to be this uh, stylist uh, boutique but you're not doing anything right. in that nature. And I can't take you seriously mm -hmm. if you're not doing those things. And I understood why people didn't take me seriously because I found myself in, in somebody else's lane. I was good at what I was doing right. and what I wanted to right. be, but I wasn't doing it for me. So how can I ask you to take me seriously mm -hmm. if if I'm living in somebody else's shoes? And nobody can do what you do. And I think that that's the big problem that um, people face now. You are listening to BeExposedRadio.com. Welcome back. Welcome back, good people. Uh, again, again, I'm your host, Coach White. I'm here with uh, Mr. Mark Rifkin. Um, and we were just having some good dialogue. We were continuing our dialogue. Um, and we're going to close out this segment. Um, so, takeaways. So, when we talk about, the, we know the conflict. The conflict is that we have a, a strong, strong number of people with heart disease in Baltimore City, uh, with diabetes. So how how can we work toward resolve? We talked about putting more beans in the diet. Um, we talked about how the food journal will be good. Absolutely. Anything else that you would uh, like to convey? Yes. So well, I'd like to reinforce the notion of cooking. Okay. And that's, cooking oodles of noodles is not cooking. No, <laughs> my goodness. Um, so, and even if, even if you buy a bottled sauce that to pour over your, your final dish, I would like you to, you to do the cutting and the chopping. Yeah. And the stir frying. Yeah. So you can use a little bit of processed food but not to the point where your entire meal is dominated by processed or restaurant food. Yeah, yeah. That's not a good model to follow. I'd also like to give a shout out to all the farmers markets yes. that are out there. Um, and of course, so let's see, this is uh, late December, so yeah. I don't know if the one under the expressway, they probably have one more Sunday before they close up shop. Okay. Um, and then there's the one in Waverly, which is open all year round. Okay. At uh, 32nd and Greenmount. Yeah. So go to the farmer's markets. Um, if, and if, even better, if you could grow the food yourself in your own community garden. Yes. So get together with your neighbors. Find an empty plot. Even, even Baltimore City will rent you a plot in the Baltimore City Park for a dollar. Mm. So you can grow your own vegetables. And of course, you know what's on it or not on it. Yeah. And if you, so you know what's sprayed, you, if you like green peppers, you can go grow green peppers. Yeah. And so that way you have pride. And of course, the more we involve our children in this, which I cannot emphasize that enough, mm. um, we have to bring these topics into our child's experience as early as possible. Yeah. From the time that they are able to walk into a garden, let them feel the soil and yeah. it's, it distinguish dirt from soil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let them feel the soil, play in it, know it, plant that green pepper, and after a while they're going to say, Mommy, that's not just a green pepper. That's my green pepper. That's right. I grew it. That's right. That's right. And I'm going to eat it because, why? Because it tastes really good because I grew it. That's right. That's powerful, man. That's powerful. Um, and that way the generations pass it on and on and exactly. on. Exactly. And that's, that's the key. That's the key. So... I also like to, you know, not not place a lot of the problem on our genes. Even though, you know, both my mother and her mother had diabetes yeah. and ultimately died of the complications of diabetes. Okay. Um, that doesn't mean I'm guaranteed to get diabetes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Especially if I eat. A, a balanced diet and live a healthy lifestyle, I can literally, if I have a gene for diabetes, I can even turn that gene off mm. with my lifestyle. Yeah, that's powerful, man. Yes, that's absolutely. Powerful. Yeah, that's powerful stuff. And, and that's important for people to hear. Yes. Because people think it's, that's it, it's over. Yeah, and it's, it's not over. It's, so at most, for, for most of these chronic conditions, Genetics is about five to ten percent of our risk. In other words, a very tiny very part. Small. Yeah. 
very small. Unfortunately, we tend to, shall we say, turn on the wrong genes and turn off the right genes. Yeah. So we're literally turning on genes that may code for increased diabetes risk or increased uh, heart disease risk. Yeah. And real quickly, um, I mentioned earlier the connection between diabetes and heart disease. Okay. Um, so th as your blood sugar rises, mm -hmm. it literally coats the inside of your arteries with sugar. Okay. To the point that they are sticky. Okay. And that's where cardiovascular disease st starts. Okay. So one of the prime killers of people with diabetes, it's not per se the diabetes itself. It's the cardiovascular disease and other conditions like um, kidney disease that come with the diabetes. Wow. So it's like you literally you're coating your insides with molasses. Oh my goodness. And that's where that inflammation starts and then the, the arteries become stiff. They don't flex like they're supposed to. The blood pressure rises, the cholesterol goes up in an attempt to repair arteries from all this damage that's being done and it's all due to the blood sugar. Wow. So, it, it, I'm hearing this for the first time. I really didn't know how it works. So if it's like molasses, then it sounds to me like it's hard for the, for the blood to even pass through. Exactly. Okay. It's hard for the blood to pass through. It's hard for that artery to f expand and contract like it's supposed to, depending on demand. Okay. And then, so that's, that's where eventually that, that artery becomes diseased, it becomes inflamed, it becomes subject to the processes that ultimately lead to um, uh, f these fatty plaques collecting on the inside of our arteries, which then potentially leads to a clot. Right. And then you have a heart attack, or if it's in the brain, you have a stroke. Wow. So, yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's not... And this process, again, this process takes many years. Yeah. Over the course of time. Yeah. But we can, we can start right now. It, it's never too late until they put you in the box. That's right. That's right. It's never too late until they put you in the box. So, I just want to thank you, sir, for your time. Thanks for having me, yeah, Coach. Yeah. It's been definitely. a pleasure. Yeah. The pleasure is mine. We definitely got to have you back on. You have a wealth of knowledge, man. I really appreciate it. So um, stay tuned. This is the Conflict Resolution Show. We'll be right back. Wow. The moment my son saw a redwood tree. It's huge! Is the moment I knew that for him. You can't even see the top! Thing. Even the sky has no limit. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Learn about forests near you and discover cool things to do when you go. Your moment is out there. Find it at discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Green light. Hey girl, school zone. I'm getting hungry. Car changing lanes. You want to meet me for pizza? Stop sign. Intersection clear. Yeah, street. Pizza sounds good. Balling Street? Girling Street! <gasps> it's hard to concentrate on two things at once, like texting and driving. Stop the text, stop the Rex. How will you stop texting and driving? Tell us at stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Join the Just a Bit Outside crew every Monday, 8 to 10 p.m. on uh, BeExposedRadio.com. You want to uh, start off? Um... I think I'll get it out of the way on a who's not. Okay, do it. The Orioles. <laughs> right, right. They, they got swept by the Royals. They lost four in a row. And mm. uh, the last five games have all been decided by one run. Mm -hmm. uh, the game before, or the, the last game that they lost before the Royals was uh, the Nationals and is a uh, uh, Weeders, of course. Mm -hmm. one, uh, one with a uh, home run. Drove right, hit the, right. Home run. hit the home run. Right. Um, they were 
going into that national series, it seemed like they were doing so well, and just they just crapped out. Um, uh-huh. They got that game postponed, so who knows when they're going to replay that or play that game. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's my first not for the night. Okay. Um, uh, uh, okay, I'm going to go ahead and um, weigh in on my who's not. And I'm going to talk about the San Diego Padres. The Padres. That's yeah. okay. You Padres just took my answer. Are, um, <laughs> they're in last place in the NL West. Um, they've lost eight of their last ten. Their run differential is a negative 65, um, which is just horrible. So when you have, uh, when, when, well, let me just uh, talk about run differential a little bit. It's it's kind of like the. Um, you How much like you're, ratio, you're winning or losing uh, your games by, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. It's like the margin of victory, kind of. Right. So, um, when you're in a negative number, that, that means that, you know, you're... Then your average game, you're losing. By a whole lot. Right. I mean, a number like negative 65, you know, this early into the in the season is is, is pretty rough. That's and horrible. The uh, the pitching numbers pretty much um, support this uh, this uh, stat right here. I mean the team ERA is 470, which is 26 in the league. Um, they have uh, 126 walks allowed. Uh, they acquired Jared Weaver in the off season, and he really has not panned out. Um, he's off to one of the worst starts in any of the pitchers in 2017. Mm-hmm. He's 0-4 with a 605 ERA. Um, in May alone, he already has 12 earned runs. T- 12 sure. earned runs right. in May, and um, you know another one of their pitchers, Clayton Richard, he's two and four, with a 4.34 ERA. And you know in May he has six earned runs and 12 innings pitched. So they're not pitching well, and um, on top of that, they are also not batting well. Right. But it kind of sucks because Manuel Margot was doing pretty good. His um, mm-hmm. the past few um, at bats, his last. Join the Just a Bit Outside crew every Monday, eight to ten p.m. on uh, BeExposedRadio.com. Join the club that gives you stuff. Hey, thanks. Radio loyalty. Here's how it works. Just click on the radio loyalty banner right now and sign up. Then you keep on listening like you already do. But now you earn points. Those points add up and you can trade them in for stuff in the radio loyalty store. Earn more points by sharing your station with friends on Facebook and Twitter, answering surveys, and by using the apps in the new players app store. Pretty simple, right? Radio loyalty. Click that banner to join now. You are listening to BeExposedRadio.com. Welcome back, welcome back, good people. So I'm sitting here with one of my great sisters, Miss Roxanne Chen. I'm so happy you joined us. It is indeed a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah, it's my pleasure. So let me make sure we on here. Okay. All right, we good? All right, so so I, I invited my sister on. She was so excited about being on the show, and I was even more excited about having her. Sure. And I said, you know, what you, you know, what do you want to talk about? And she said, self-forgiveness. How powerful is that? I, and I thought about, even in my own life, how many times I haven't forgiven myself, and it really stunted my spiritual growth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so so talk to me about, I want to get right into this because this is juicy. Yes, yes. <laughs> so talk to me, why that topic for you? Well, when I talked to you, I had just completed doing um, a presentation. Okay. And typical business presentation, I thought nothing of it. Mm-hmm. It was over. A woman came up to me and said, I needed that. Okay. I said, how so? Yeah. And she said, you know, just this morning I was blow drying my hair and I just started crying and my husband couldn't help me. And I couldn't tell him that I was still trying to forgive myself for all the difficulties I had put him through. Mm. And I said to her, well, just imagine if you had let that go. Yeah. You'd be able to blow dry your hair and keep moving. Yeah. He wouldn't have to stop to try to figure out what's wrong and how to fix it when he couldn't. Yeah. He would be able to enjoy his morning with his wife. Mm, mm, mm. And so the day would go on. But more than anything, it was evident on the exterior mm. what it was doing to her. Mm, mm, mm. 
Wow. So while we hide things inside, you know, that yeah. storm, yeah. it sort of kind of looms out and morphs into different things. I believe that. Whether it be um, depression or self-pity or mm -hmm. worrying, yeah. which you're not supposed to have anyway. You're supposed to replace that with what? Faith, right? That's right. That's right. So, interestingly enough, it made me think about myself. Okay. You know, I even have struggled with um, self-forgiveness, okay. which can create negative self-talk. Okay. It can knock down confidence. Yeah. It can hide happiness yeah. or doesn't allow it to show. Yeah. So me being on the road all the time, sometimes I felt guilty mm. about being out having a great time in another state while my family was at home taking care of stuff. Hmm. Wow. That's so what did it do? It did, didn't allow me to have a good time. Okay. Okay. I would call home. Is everything okay? Yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. I would worry. I may not go to a dinner. I may go to my hotel room and just say, I should be home. Hmm. So were you really having a good time? Or was it a mask? I didn't allow myself to. Okay. I went on a two-week cruise last year. Mm -hmm. I was miserable. Wow. On a cruise. Who would be miserable on a cruise? Wow. But that's what that um, lack of self-forgiveness and yourself, allowing yourself to enjoy. Yeah. We yeah. don't do it. Yeah. And we put on this, this mask. Yeah. Of hi, how you doing? Everything's great, and it's not. Yeah. So, so what? I'm, I'm sure that happens more than than we can imagine. Mm -hmm. So, if the, if the viewer is saying, "Am I just supposed to open up and be honest with everybody and tell them really what's going on?" What would your response be to that? Well, I tell you, let me back up a little bit. Sure. I'll tell you what the the healing point was for me. Um, we were in Virginia. It was all of our family a couple of months ago. And I said to my brother, I said, man, I was in Lake Tahoe and I was so worried about things. Okay. And he said, how can you be in Lake Tahoe and worry? Yeah. Believe it or not, something so simple that happened, mm -hmm. it sort of kind of gave me the okay to be okay. Okay. Permission. Yeah. Okay. And so for someone who is struggling with self-forgiveness, you have to have positive talk, replace it with positive talk. We're very, we very easily talk negatively Easy. inside. It's natural. Yeah. And we've created that habit of saying, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if it'll happen. I don't know if I'll get the job. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it'll come through all these negative things before the opportunity even presents itself. Yeah. Yeah. And it comes in all fashions and it shows up all the time. And you have got to build the character that is strong enough to be able to say it can happen. Yeah. I am going to get that job. And, and there are lots of reading materials out there. Um, the Secret. I like the book called The Secret. Okay. okay. That helps you think differently. And I carry it in my bag wherever I go. Okay. Um, because it gives you optimistic guidance. When you feel yourself going to the left to say it's not going to happen, you got to pull yourself back. Yeah. And a lot of things we don't do as a community, such as meditation. Mm. I went to a meditation a couple months ago. Yeah. I think it was the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. Wow. And what made it difficult? Just you had to be in to the moment. Yeah. Not thinking about what you need to do tomorrow or should have done yesterday or what happened yesterday or what you need to happen tomorrow. You have to be in the moment. And they keep bringing you back. Yeah. But if you have an A personality like myself, where you want to control things, mm -hmm. you're always trying to plan ahead and mm -hmm. figure out the steps before they occur. Yeah, sure. Sure. Not allowed in meditation. Okay. Okay. So those are some of the things I've encountered. I just was at the airport yesterday and the lady talked about she's in therapy. Mm -hmm. Trying to get over how she talks to her kids. Mm. It's a decision to change. Yeah. Yeah. 
as opposed to putting down a wad of cash to a therapist to tell you how to be kind to your children. Mm, 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 mm. Wow. Those are habits and characteristics that one has to work on continuously. Yeah. Yeah. Almost like how we drop our credit card to go shopping continuously. Yes, right. That's and go right. into debt continuously. That's right. Let's do this continuously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so, it's, it's, it will be so affectious to the future. I'm always thinking about the future generations yes. of our families. Yes. When we start doing this now, we mm -hmm. impact them. Mm hmm Yeah. We're teaching them to be like us, whether yeah. good, bad, or indifferent. Yes. Yes. And it becomes very important when you talk about the genders. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, because not necessarily do we want to teach young ladies, I think, to always, always, always be in charge. We yeah, want yeah. them to be smart, assertive, aggressive, yeah. good decision makers, yeah. but also kind enough to allow others to lead the way, to give them guidance. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's powerful. Yeah. So join the join conversation. Uh, again, you could call at 410 702-5657 is 410-702-5657. We're talking generally about intrapersonal conflicts, specifically about self-forgiveness. So this is my sister Roxanne Chen. Um, and again, I'm glad that you uh, brought this topic to my attention. I think about and being 100% transparent, uh, a man with two failed marriages, um, first marriage I didn't even know what I was getting into uh, I just I had not knowing Christ at the time it was uh, very very uh, it was something that was burning in me that wouldn't allow me to have a son out of wedlock I just it was it just wasn't something that I, I felt comfortable with doing mm -hmm. so I ended up getting married because of my child. Um, and I can remember going to the minister months and months later saying, man, what in the world did I get myself into? Here I am, this guy. To the public, I was one person. But in private, I was a whole nother person. And shout out to, to Nolita White. Great people. Great people. I destroyed that marriage. Not even knowing, 27, not even knowing who I was. Mm -hmm. But I had to recognize, and I'm going to turn it back to you because it's not about me. No, it's okay. I had to recognize that my identity was hidden in Christ. Mm -hmm. And I had to come to know who he is mm -hmm. before I could even know who I am or what my purpose is. Mm -hmm. So um, I had to forgive myself, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, in order mm -hmm. for me to move on. Mm -hmm. I had to say, you know, I was that guy. And I did these things, you know, I was distant and, and it goes back. You talked about therapy. I even think about how as a child, one of my punishments was to go in my room. Right. Mm -hmm. And my mother gave me real beatings. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> shout out to Violet White, my first queen. <laughs> so, yeah, I got real beatings. I had to go in my room. No radio, no television, no telephone. Ooh. And I was isolated. But look how it transitioned into my adult life. Whenever I got frustrated, I isolated myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I isolated myself. I didn't want to be bothered. Mm -hmm. So now I'm in this marriage where I'm, I'm irritated, I'm upset, I'm mm -hmm. irritable. And I just go downstairs, mm -hmm. leave me alone, don't bother me. Mm -hmm. Right. And it tore us apart completely. And I had to forgive that 27 year old mm -hmm. boy mm -hmm. for that. Yep. In order to move on. And the other thing is words matter. Yeah. So when you just said to me, I've had two failed marriages, you can you can dig down deep and pull out some words that can attach themselves to emotions that come back. Yeah. They just do. Yeah. So that is why the positive talk is critical. Yeah. Because meditation won't let you go back and talk about those two failed marriages yes. because you've already overcome it. Yeah. But you still talk about it. Yeah. And so you remember the pain, the struggle mm -hmm. and perhaps what you did to the other person. Yeah. And so um, that I tell you, it's internal, but it comes out as an external conflict. 
Absolutely. Which then becomes possibly an opportunity for conflict resolution on different levels with different types of people for different reasons that you hadn't even thought about. Yeah. Whether or not you walk past someone and say good morning. Yeah. Whether or not you fail to do some work because you were still struggling yeah. trying to get past. Yeah. But it is important to remember the words that you use. Yeah. And you just could have said, haven't been married before, but two failed marriages. The word failed is powerful. I believe that. I believe that. Let's, di let's dig back into that. We're going to go to a break. We'll be right back. Please stay tuned. This is the Conflict Resolution Show. Now listen to BeExposedRadio.com Check out this fire flashback We need to relearn what it is to be these bosses And, and how we conduct ourselves as business uh, in, Business minded individuals And just people in general yeah. I'm really I, I, I let my gut uh, And if I call it gut or God or whatever uh, yeah, I'm led by that energy I know where it comes from. I know where it's, you know, taking me. And, and I, you have to figure out what is important to you. And don't play this game. It's a game that we've learned to play, this chess game. And life is not a chess game. Life is real. Bones, flesh, blood, decisions. Uh, Make sure you check out the Artist Exchange Show every Monday and Friday at 2 p.m. Only on BeExposedRadio.com. Hi, I'm LeVar Burton. And I'm proud to be a book person. How do I choose a book? Sometimes it's the cover, sometimes it's the title. I guess I'm pretty visual. If a book's really impressing me and the writing is really good, I will peek and see what the last paragraph is because the endings of books should rock you. I am a book person. And if you're a book person too, read to a child and spark a lifetime of ambition. Join me at bookpeopleunite.org because reading is fundamental. A public service announcement brought to you by Reading is Fundamental, Library of Congress and the Ad Council. Check out this flashback for me. It is what it is, radio show. Paul was he was chilling, he was doing his thing. Y'all, you feel me? A lot of y'all family, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And like for him to be taken away from you, snatched away from you, just like that. You feel me? It's like, like damn. The hard, the hard good. one gone. You know what I'm saying? Like why why are you taking the good? Did you know what I'm saying? You always end up asking, like, why? And and, no and that's and, 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 and like again. It's a lesson that you, it, it's a test of faith, you feel me, gonna take you through these tests, you feel me, you gonna go through these little phases in life, yo, you know what I'm saying, and at the end of the day, you just gotta recognize that, one, it's, it's the adversary trying to knock you off your pivot, and then it's God trying to teach you something, you feel me, right. anything that you go through, you gonna get through, it's called going through, you feel me, that's why it's called going through, you going through something. Right. You feel me? Because after you go through it, you get through it, you look back on it like, damn, I got it. You feel what I'm saying? For this and more, be sure to tune in to BeExposedRadio.com every Friday from 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock p.m. to listen to more of It Is What It Is radio show. The Artist Exchange Radio Show every Friday, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., every Saturday, 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Real artist, real talk, real live on BeExposedRadio.com. I was meeting with a friend yesterday and you are listening to beexposedradio.com. Hey people, again, I'm your host, Coach White. We are talking generally about interpersonal conflicts, specifically about self forgiveness. So, Sister Roxanne Chen is joining me, and we're talking about the power of words as it pertains to self forgiveness. So, is it possible? that I thought that I've forgiven myself and I really haven't? Absolutely. You like to play tricks for people. Okay. So you want to appear that everything is okay. And we just finished talking about the mind. The brain is so complex and so, so wonderful at the same time yeah. that you can um, take words or triggers Mm -hmm. People are triggers, um, songs yeah. on a radio, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, being in a certain place and time, a particular restaurant, stimuli mm -hmm. can allow you to carry the memory. But because you are, I think I like to say, covered by grace, 
We can do all kinds of things on the outside. Smile, talk to you, everything is fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's a storm on the inside. On the inside. Wow. And so, yes, I can always speak to the fact that everything is great. I've forgiven myself. I'm moving on. You'll have that one quiet moment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it just creeps back. Wow. And maybe you're getting ready to go to a party and you're like, oh. I hope I don't run into such and such. Mm. Why? Because you've not forgiven yourself. Yeah. Or that individual. Yeah. And that's another powerful piece of it. You can forgive people, but they don't have to necessarily be in your company. Yeah. yeah. Especially if you know that it's not healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But you know, the book of Matthew talks about forgiveness. Absolutely. Talk to me. And that is <laughs> the trigger point for all good things that you want to come your way. Yeah, absolutely. It is a difficult task to do. Um, you have to really be powerful inside to really start to forgive people and mm -hmm. let go. Yeah. You know, everybody's saying let go and let God. It's real. Oh, yeah. Let go. Yeah. And it's nothing wrong with, if you can, picking up the phone and saying, hey, I just want to say how you were doing. That's a sort of kind of sweet way of saying I forgive you. Yeah. Until you're big enough, strong enough, great enough, I think. It's a great gift to do, to be able to do it. Yeah. And not many of us are there, not even me. When I talk about this, it's, it's a struggle. Yeah. Yeah. But if you don't deal with it, it will cause that conflict. Yeah. Because you eventually run into that person. Mm -hmm. Someone brings up that person. Yeah. You know it's that person's birthday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or in the workplace. It can be counterproductive to getting the job done. Yeah. It can be um, a long day at work. Yeah. yeah. Because of the detours that you take to avoid people or circumstances. Absolutely. Absolutely. So again, join and be a part of the conversation. You can call us at 410-702-5657. Um, when I think about self-forgiveness, um, I think about how free it how free how free you feel when you do forgive yourself um for whatever it was mm -hmm. right it, it could be anything you know but just forgiving yourself um empowers you in a way that even if somebody else hasn't forgiven you mm -hmm. you okay with it yeah yeah <laughs> And, you know, forgiveness is more than I'm sorry. That's right. I was wrong. I yeah. shouldn't have. It's, you know, what I did and what I said yeah. was wrong. Yeah. I shouldn't have done it. Yeah. 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 And I want to know how you feel about that. Because sometimes that other person, too, needs to be able to say a few things. Yeah. To help them get over the hump so they can be good with seeing you on the next time. And two, moving forward. Mm -hmm. And to let people know it had nothing to do with you. Yeah. My mother used to always say, say that to all of us. It had nothing to do with you. Mm. The other person, yeah. whether it be you or I, yeah. it's their issue. That's right. And having the knowledge to understand that it had nothing to do with you is another powerful step. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's a whole, it's a powerful process yes, in and of itself. Yes, it is. And it's definitely, is worthy to be broken down into small pieces. Yes. Um, so we can, we can figure it all out chunk mm -hmm. by chunk. Yes. Because when you bring it all together, that's, that's, that is the mark mm -hmm. of what we believe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, one mm -hmm. of the, one of the uh, thing that puts a stamp on our authenticity as believers in Christ is our ability for, yes. to forgive ourselves and others. Yes. Um, that's powerful. When you were talking about Matthew, I thought about the prayer that we often pray. Mm -hmm. Forgive us our trespasses just as we forgive those. Yes. Right. Amen. Who trespass against us. So here we are in this prayer that we deem to be our Lord's prayer where we ask in him to forgive us. But just as we forgive mm -hmm. others, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how many times, you know, we we could talk about the book mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. We talk about, you know, going to the altar and, and 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 giving 
to the church. Mm -hmm. But the word talks about, hey, no, 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 don't do that. Uh -huh. You need to go back and make it right with your brother yes. first. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. then you can bring it to uh -huh. the office. Yeah. So it's just so much there when mm -hmm. it pertains to forgiveness. Talking mm -hmm. to Peter. How many mm -hmm. times must I forgive my brother? Mm -hmm. 70 times 7. Mm -hmm. Right? It's an infinite number. Or what about the book of Mark when it says, Ask and it shall be given. Cast this mountain into the sea and it shall be gone. But you have to stand in belief and forgive Mm. before you can be granted. Wow. And so the message is clear throughout the book. Yes. The other thing is forgiveness you don't control necessarily. You asked about how do you mask it? People do, but the X factor is the other person. Yeah. How do you finesse the relationship? Because we're in a relationships are everything in everything that we do. It is. It in is. everything. You cannot get past it. Yeah. You're right. And so when you learn to understand, A, there's a need for forgiveness, mm -hmm. B, how to do it, when to do it, C, have the other receive it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What a gift. Yeah. What a gift. And so this is the season, the new year, Christ's birthday. Mm -hmm. Give yourself the gift of forgiveness. That's right. It is difficult. Yeah. So what? Do it. Yeah. So talk to that. Talk to that. I always say that I like to make sure that we minister to the young adults. Young adult, at one point, she's older now. She realizes that, you know, she made a, a lot of mistakes in bringing up her children. Mm -hmm. Dang, I shouldn't have did this. I shouldn't have did that. And she can't forgive herself. What, what would you say to that young adult who is now older, more mature adult? That's seeing the, the behavior pattern of that of her son or mm -hmm. her daughter, mm -hmm. and she knows that she was uh, instrumental mm -hmm. in the behavior of her child. Mm -hmm. She doesn't like what she sees at this point. Mm -hmm. What would you say to that young adult? Well, I would say to the mother or father, I think that people parent at the levels that they are in at that time. Mm -hmm. So you're beating yourself up about what you didn't do 20 years ago because you didn't know it 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Now you're wiser looking back trying to change and, and move water under the bridge, which you cannot do. Yeah. So it is about going forward, but also having that dialogue with the young person to say, I did the best that I could based on what I knew, yeah. who I was and where I was. Yeah. Yeah. That's big. That's, That's big. you. You can't penalize yourself for what you didn't know. You know it now. You know it's 2020 now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can't change the past. Yeah. And so you've made some mistakes. You see them in your children. Yeah. Let's that's, pray about it. That's right. We're going to go to a break. We'll be right back. That's good. Yeah. I'm LeVar Burton, and I'm proud to be a book person. How do I choose a book? Sometimes it's the cover, sometimes it's the title. I guess I'm pretty visual. If a book's really impressing me and the writing is really good, I will peek and see what the last paragraph is because the endings of books should rock you. I am a book person, and if you're a book person too, read to a child and spark a lifetime of ambition. Join me at bookpeopleunite.org because reading is fundamental. A public service announcement brought to you by Reading is Fundamental, Library of Congress, and the Ad Council. Green light. Hey girl, school zone. I'm getting hungry. Car changing lanes. You want to meet me for pizza? Stop sign. Intersection clear. Yeah, street. Pizza sounds good. Ball in street? Girl in street! <gasps> it's hard to concentrate on two things at once, like texting and driving. Stop the text, stop the wrecks. How will you stop texting and driving? Tell us at stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. So, Jacqueline. Yes, Mom? I wanted to talk to you about something and... Oh, wait. Hold on. I just got a text. Oh, there's another one. Wow. Busy, busy me. So, anyway... Oh, wait, Mom. I just got a message. My friends keep commenting on my comment. Oh, there's another one. So many comments on my comment. Oh, I can't wait to watch TV tonight. Playoffs! Hey, guys, check out my new video game. Pew, pew. Wait, 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 Mom, what? Huh? What? Hold What'd on. you say? Wait a sec, huh? What? This weekend, unplug. Take your family to the forest. 
There's nothing in the world like experiencing nature firsthand. Trees, paths, bluebirds, streams. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. To find the forest nearest you, go to discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Join the Just a Bit Outside crew every Monday, 8 to 10 p.m. on uh, BeExposedRadio.com. You want to uh, start off? Um, I think I'll get it out of the way on a who's not. Okay, do it. The Orioles. <laughs> right, right. They, they got swept by the Royals. They lost four in a row. And mm. uh, the last five games have all been decided by one run. Mm-hmm. Uh, the game before, or the, the last game that they lost before the Royals was uh, the Nationals and as a uh, uh, Weeders, of course, mm-hmm. won, the, won with a uh, home run. Drove right, away. hit the right. home run. You are listening to BeExposedRadio.com. Welcome back. Welcome back, good people. Again, I'm Coach White. We're going to pick right back up where we left off. So during the break, we were talking about the father and the son dynamic and how we have so many young brothers who are so separated. And I'm going to use the term divorced from their fathers. They're now 20 years old and they're making comments like, you know, my mother was my mother and my father or I don't need him anymore. Why should I? men the fence with him but on the other side of the coin you had a father who realizes like you know my kid is 20 now i'm different and i need to forgive myself for not being there for him mm-hmm. how, how would you minister to both parties first i would talk to the son okay if he's when you talk about i don't need my father he's never done anything for me those of not those are not terms of endearment those are words of anger yeah. and they become part of a cycle they become part of your everyday conversation yeah. which generates ill feelings yeah and so in order to break that cycle actually to break it up and make peace mm-hmm. and usher in peace mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you may not need your father but have the dialogue with him i don't need you I know that you were not there. Yeah. I'm good now. I got some things I'm struggling with. Mm-hmm. But I forgive you. Yeah. And then hopefully that father can say, because I, I can, I know some fathers now who, who need to say the words, I didn't do my part. Yeah. I didn't show up. I wasn't all the way there. Yeah. And I need to apologize for that. And I need to do right. Yeah. And I know you don't need me. And I see that you're doing well and things are going well. And I'm very glad. And I had very little to do with it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I want you to know I'm proud. So again, it's words, those trigger words that create emotions. I am proud of you. Yeah. You look like you're doing well. Yeah. Yeah. You've become a fine young man. Yeah. Better than me when I was your age. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's crucial. Yes. So, in essence, forgiveness is for who? Well, you know, we used to say forgiveness is for self. Mm -hmm. And I believe that it is. But I also think that in this day and age, because our world is so broken Mm -hmm. on many levels, forgiveness is not only just for me, it's for you. It's for our community. It's for our workplace. It's for our schools. Because people are walking around like zombies, angry on the inside Mm -hmm. yeah you know the tears of a clown so to speak yeah not unresolved anger becomes um the conduit for illnesses yes for mental health challenges yes for physical altercations yep um for people who become depressed or they shut down Mm -hmm. um and it's interesting how people can be in relationships. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine that. And that's, that's why I'm very, very careful about relationships. Yes. I don't want to be in a relationship and be mad at my boyfriend or whatever, my spouse or fiance, mm-hmm. and not talk to him mm-hmm. for two or three days. And I love you, really? Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I'm not sure how I would handle if you hurt me really bad. I'm not ready for that. Yeah. Yeah. Because you have to be ready to be able to manage the emotions that comes with it, but still be able to go on. Because what's interesting about pain and lack of forgiveness is you have to still go on every day. Yes. You have to show up for work. Yep. You have to fix the kids lunch. Mm -hmm. You have to read books. You're angry. You're hurt. You're crushed. Man, that's a powerful thing to do. Mothers do it all the time. Single parents do it all the time. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And when we talk about forgiveness and single parents and things of that nature, I, I, I thought about not the fact that uh, people wear the mask per se, but when you said illness, I thought about how unforgiveness or not forgiving yourself can lead to that depression, can mm -hmm. lead to that anxiety mm -hmm. and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And like you alluded to before the previous break, when those when we when we are faced with those triggers, mm -hmm. and then it's back again. Yep. And now I get caught up in a cycle mm -hmm. if I'm not careful. Mm -hmm. And that's why that, that's what makes it even more powerful. Mm -hmm. It's so free mm -hmm. to forgive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so. God's gift. And it, it when when you exercise it, it's like a relief. Yeah. And you know, I think it too comes with some level of fear. You know, it's like fire shut up in your bones. Yeah. Right? Um but we're not supposed to have the spirit of fear, but of love and power. Yes. And that sense of freedom gives you that power. Um, and, you know, the next time I come back, I'll talk about entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and how free. Yes. Because even though just having a job sometimes and going to it every day can just cause stuff. Mm -hmm. And it won't allow you to process those triggers that cause emotions that cause internal storms, external conflicts. Yeah. No forgiveness. It is such a relief. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you know the song, I'm free. Yeah. <laughs> no longer bound. That's right. That's right. And we have the power to do it. Yeah. We've been given the gift. We have the power to exercise it. Pride is an ugly thing. Absolutely. Um, greed. Mm -hmm. Selfishness. Yes. All of the things that we're not supposed to do, we get caught up in. And I tell you, it is just, you can change who you are. You can change your circumstances you because you no longer block your blessings. I believe that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, yeah. people call it luck. Uh-uh. That's right. Mm -mm, not at all. No. Nah. When you've done something right and you keep pushing and you fight the good fight, you run the good race every day. Yeah. And you try to do the best that you can every day. Mm -hmm. Exercise and forgiveness. Everything will come your way. And they say the good book says things your ears have not heard. Eyes have not seen. That's right. That's right. That you've not imagined because the mind is so powerful. But if we could just remember that the the Lord is in charge. If you just remember that, you're going through something. If you just put in your mind that the Lord is over everything, mm. including time, and he will redeem whatever it is that you thought that you've lost. Even that of the opportunity to forgive, it can change your life. Yeah. Yeah. When you were talking about workplace, I thought about. And I want you guys to think about your own workplaces, your work environments, rather. So many times uh, there's a group of people mm -hmm. who keep the chatter going. Mm -hmm. Every single work environment, mm -hmm. it, it never fails. Mm -hmm. It's in every work environment. Mm -hmm. They keep the chatter going mm -hmm. and they create a toxic environment. And they keep stuff going. They're spreading rumors. They're gossiping and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe it's somebody that's, that's tuned in right now that may be involved in some kind of workplace conflict. Maybe you messed up somewhere at work, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And you haven't forgiven yourself. 
and you are contributing to that environment. Mm. You can, you can, and I've, I've talked to me, Sister Roxanne, you could be in a place where you haven't forgiven yourself and you go in an environment and as a defense mechanism, you start talking about people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It don't have nothing to do mm -hmm. with those other people. Mm -hmm. It's all about. <laughs> it's just, it morphs into negativity. Yes. And that's the other thing. Have you ever said to someone, you spend most of your time at work, but have you ever said to someone, hi, how are you today? And they go through this whole list of negative stuff. Mm -hmm. You have to walk away from it. Okay, I'm praying for you. Thank you. And keep going. Yeah. And then the next time you see them, you say, I'm feeling great today. I hope you are too. Don't even give them the chance. That's right. And those negative people, I tell you, I've, I've fought some battles in the workplace. Mm-hmm. And the way that I fought it was every day I was in prayer before I went in. I put my backpack or my arsenal knowledge. That's right. Right. And then peace. Hey, how you doing today? I hope everything's all right. Yeah. yeah. If I can do anything for you, let me know. Because I know y'all probably talking about me, but it's all good. <laughs> That's right. I would do it. I don't care, you know, because I want them to know I'm more bored with it, but it's yeah. all good, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to keep moving. That's right. But, and that's, that's the power we have. That's right. The weak fall into those traps. Yeah. And you can pluck them out one by one. Because yeah. one day you can take that one person to lunch. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. And they get to say, and I know you you and I've had, I think this, this crossroads. Yeah. Roxanne, I didn't know you were that nice. <laughs> Really? I, I don't even know you. What? what yeah. the, how could you not? Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because you right. listen or yeah. you assume yeah. I could just be about the business. Hey, yeah. how you doing? Keep it moving. That's right. And you assume something about me without taking the time mm -hmm. to get to know me. But you get into this crowd who says, well, this, this. I don't put any value in that because I want right. to know the person that's right. for myself. That's right. Because my battle, your battle can't be mine. Yeah. It cannot. But I just want people to remember words. Words matter. Yeah. And my mother will tell you, I'm quick with, I'm quick on my feet, quick with responses. Well, you know how to do this. You can do that. And sometimes I have to slow down. I can get in the car and say, I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. Um, so you come back the next time you do it a little differently. Words mm -hmm. matter. And when you talk about something that you've experienced in your <clears throat> own life, how you classify that in words is critical because if you say the words like failed, that brings about, oh, it wasn't good. Yes. But we're done with that. Yeah. Yeah. Old things behind us. Yeah. Yeah. I've had some relationships. I've had some marriages that have taught me some lessons. Like I say, 2018 has taught some great lessons. Mm -hmm. 2019. Arsenal was full, ready, powered on to usher through. That's right. That's right. That's right. And one of them is forgiveness. Got the be. best gift for the new year. Yeah. Amen to that. Yes. And we were also talking during a break. Tell me, t tell the viewing audience of how beneficial the meditation center is for you. So I go to the um, Columbia Meditation Center. My friend, uh, my best friend Kim and I went. And it was very difficult because you sit in a circle on these pillows. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, I said, hey, I need an extra pillow. I'm a little full figured, so I can't like spread out like a pretzel. I need some, you know, some pork. Come on. <laughs> so he was like, of course. Yeah. And then they ring this bell, this mm -hmm. ancient bell, Asian. Mm -hmm. And then he says, concentrate. And he says, visualize something. So my visual is a pink lily on a lily, lily pod in okay. the water. Okay. And so stay focused on that. And 25 seconds will go through. And I was thinking about, oh, I need to go to the store. I need to get some butter. I need to call my mother and see if she needs anything from the store. And he would say, let's come back and focus. And then I would say, I can't believe that happened yesterday. I let the car get down to E. It's cold outside. Now I got to pump the gas. Let's come back and focus. It's an opportunity to bring you back into the present moment because Living in the moment allows you to appreciate what you've been given in the moment. Mm. The ability to breathe, talk, walk, your faculties. Yeah. You're above the dirt on the right side, of course. Yeah. So yeah. all of those things, it makes you focus and you yeah. learn it. You become better and better over time. And we also did yoga. We did what's called um, 
um, baby yoga. Okay. And they're just minor sweeping moves mm -hmm. that you don't think about. I was sore the next day, but during the process, can you yeah. believe I was sore? <laughs> during the process, I was relaxed. Yeah, yeah. Because they tell you just lie on the floor on your mat, and the first thing you think is, okay, what next? What are you going to do next? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She say, in the moment, just listen to my voice. I was like, okay, what's going to happen next? Yeah. They had to keep bringing, bring, bring, bring it yourself back to the moment. Yeah. Because you don't get it back ever again. Mm. Wow. Bring yourself back to the moment and yeah. use it because the mind is so powerful. You can go back and snatch that time mm -hmm. and say, when I meditated, I was relaxed. I listened. I followed instruction. I was in the moment. Yeah. We lose time by living in the future and in the past. Mm. And as we delve into the past, um, we can lose our happiness because we look at the misery, the sadness, the mistakes that yeah. we say we've forgiven ourselves for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. we keep digging it back up along with its emotions. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's, that's big. Yes. That's big. Um, so I thought as you were talking, my brain is, is moving and working. I was thinking about how it's easy to... Um, have the negative self-talk. Um, so what, what would you say to a person who is constantly speaking negatively? I know you mentioned earlier about um, just speaking positive, but maybe for some people it's just not that easy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and maybe I, I don't, you know, maybe it's the first time I'm hearing about mm -hmm, a meditation mm -hmm. center that would really help me to focus. Mm -hmm. What would you suggest to the person who has acknowledged that they're constantly having a lot of negative mm -hmm, self-talk mm -hmm. and they don't find it easy for mm -hmm, them mm -hmm. to, to say positive mm -hmm. things? Well, you can create a visual board. Um, it's as simple as taking a shoebox top, going through magazines and find those positive words like good morning, yeah. great, awesome, amazing, yeah. powerful. And you put those, you take the time to cut them out mm -hmm. and you paste them in your visual board and you can put it back on top of your shoes so that no one sees it. But every morning, take that box and look at it mm -hmm. and create a visual board of what you want to acquire in life. Mm. I still have mine from 12 years ago. Wow. And it's funny when I look at it, I say, you know what? I haven't done this yet because I had like a six carat engagement ring on it, right? Okay. But you got to find a, a, a man with six <laughs> carat money, right? <laughs> yeah. So I, I said, I haven't done that yeah. yet. Yeah, I got to yeah. I got to get to where, where they are. So I was in yeah. Lake Tahoe. I said, well, maybe want to come out. Probably not. But um, so that visual board, it had, you know, church. It had um, I put in there fifty thousand dollars. And that was going to be my savings account. Uh huh. So think about the things that you enjoy, want to do. Yeah. Visual. Yeah. Put it out there. Yeah. That's what you have to do. You have to have the stimuli to remind you because negative talk is going to exist. Mm -hmm. But if you have things around you, even where you live in your home, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. whether it's a picture, whether it's music you listen to, a lot of people listen to audio books yeah. or Joyce Meyer, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, in their car. Yeah. That's that push in the morning on my uh, SXM radio station. I'm listening to Joel Osteen. Okay. We're going to go to a break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Wow. The moment my son saw a redwood tree. It's is the moment I knew that for him... You can't even see the top of that thing! Even the sky has no limit. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Learn about forests near you and discover cool things to do when you go. Your moment is out there. Find it at discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. 
or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Green light. Hey girl, school zone. I'm getting hungry. Car changing lanes. You want to meet me for pizza? Stop sign. Intersection clear. Yeah, street. Pizza sounds good. Ball in street? Girl in street! (gasps) It's hard to concentrate on two things at once, like texting and driving. Stop the text. Stop the wrecks. How will you stop texting and driving? Tell us at stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. You are tuned in to BeExposedRadio.com. So we were talking about critical thinking. So we definitely believe that critical thinking is one of the first things we need to start implementing. Not just simply being told things. Or how about this? You know, we tend to listen to people who get assigned certain positions. Right. You get what I'm saying? So when they have certain positions, mm-hmm. we tend to think that it's truth. Attached to that. You are listening to BeExposedRadio.com. Back. Welcome back, good people, again. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting us into your home this evening. And thank you for being part of the conversation. I look forward to your comments on the Conflict Resolution Show page. I'm sure that you are blessed uh, by the information that's being provided. Um, Sister Roxanne, there's nothing more important than self-forgiveness. My question is, um, how soon do you think that we should forgive ourselves? And let's just throw something out there. Okay. Road rage. Most people have road Mm. rage, right? Um, We may roll the windows down and give somebody the the third degree, Mm -hmm. right? But the mature voice in our heads may say, you know, that wasn't the right thing mm-hmm, to do. Mm-hmm. If we know the individual, maybe we don't. But how soon should that self-forgiveness take place? Well, I don't know why you chose road rage, because <laughs> I'm going to tell you what. I'm not yelling anything out the windows That's because right. it's crazy. I'm not. I remember when I threw yeah. a milkshake at somebody on Kenilworth Avenue about 10 years ago. <laughs> Okay, they didn't shoot me then. Yeah. This year they may. Yes. So, I, road rage, that's not a good one. I'm not going to yeah. do that. But, yeah. immediately, because the gift is available immediately. That's right. And you can practice it. It may not be perfect, but it's a start. Yeah. You have to start. And I'm just saying the new year is the place to start. It's, it's, a, it's a moment in time. Of course, of course, God controls time. We know it as the beginning of the year, the beginning of many new things, yeah. the first fruits, the right? first fruits, yes. So start to practice now. Teach your children learn guilt very early on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And based on how we talk to them, we instill fear in them. I can't tell the truth. I'll get in trouble. Yeah. Um, but you see them cry at a young age because they're hurting. It's that forgiveness struggle. And they don't know what it is quite then. But start now. Start with every individual. Hey, it's a new year. I want to say to you, if I've ever done anything to you or said anything, mm. I want to apologize because yeah. you're important to me. Yeah. Yeah. Start with your family. Start with your friends. Mm. Just start the process. Do a family activity, activity with it. Yeah. That's right. Engage the young people, the children. Yeah. We teach them to say, I'm sorry. Well, let's teach them, I forgive you. Do you forgive me? Yeah. Oh, man, you just said something. You just said something. I think about how uh, being childlike is so crucial with forgiveness. Mm-hmm. You look at two year olds, three year olds. They forgive instantly. What happens when we become adults? Where we can't even, I don't want to talk to so-and-so. Or I'm mm-hmm. not calling so-and-so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm thinking about families. I just talked to a young sister um, just last week, or this week rather. And she said, um, Coach White, my family and I don't even come together on holidays because it's so much friction in the family. It will be so much drama. We don't even come together. What happens to us as adults? Well, you know, it's the same thing as when we were children. We played with children that looked different. That's right. They looked 
they were white, black, Asian. We didn't care. We, we loved each other. We were children. As we grew up, it's interesting, the same two friends that played together when they were two, three, and four, let's say they're 40 now, friends look different. Yeah. We polarize. Yeah. But um, children are the example of what to be. They find fun in the small things. Yeah. They love you unconditionally. Yeah. Yeah. When yeah. you when you just look a mess in the morning and you're just wrinkled, your clothes are wrinkled, they still just love you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So love is at the foundation of it all. Absolutely. Absolutely. Love of life, love of laughter, love of the word, yeah. love of each other. Yeah. Absolutely. We can do it. We can absolutely do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's one that's one to, to break on. So thank you for joining me. And thank this will you. not be the last time. No, it can't be. Yeah, yeah. So again, it's Sister Roxanne, and we're gonna go to our thank final you. break. We're closing out the show. We'll be right back. rewarding you for something you already do listening to us it's radio loyalty and it's an easy way for you to get free stuff all you do is sign up go ahead and click the banner now you'll earn points as you listen points you can trade in for great products and services in the radio loyalty store you can earn even more points when you share your favorite station with friends on facebook and twitter radio loyalty it's free to sign up so click the banner to join now the artist exchange radio show every friday 7 p.m to 9 p.m every Saturday, 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Real Artist, Real Talk, Real Live on BeExposedRadio.com um, I was meeting with a friend yesterday and I've gotten to the point where don't ask me a question because the truth is going to come out. And exactly. Just don't do if it. If you ain't looking for the truth, don't come to me. Don't do it because <laughs> I, I, I can't hold my tongue and she wants to be this uh, stylist, uh, boutique, but you're not doing anything right. in that nature. And I can't take you seriously mm -hmm. if you're not doing those things. And I understood why people didn't take me seriously because I found myself in, in somebody else's lane. I was good at what I was doing right. and what I wanted to right. be, but I wasn't doing it for me. So how can I ask you to take me seriously mm -hmm. if if I'm living in somebody else's shoes? And nobody can do what you do. And I think that that's a big problem that um, people face now like you see what somebody else is doing and you want to do that when that's not your lane that's not your lane that's not what you're supposed to be doing but it's popular it's getting that yeah. person money it's getting that person applause oh i want applause right. i want money let me stand over here behind them and then a lot of times people aren't honest with themselves either like i was thinking earlier today and i've been woke for almost two days so <laughs> So you get on the seat, yeah. <laughs> and I was thinking like, you know. The Artist Exchange Radio Show. You are listening to BeExposedRadio.com. Your host, Coach White. This is the Conflict Resolution Show. We're just going to wrap up and close out. Sister Roxanne, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Self-forgiveness is... Uh, is crucial mm -hmm. and this is like you said this is the best time of the mm -hmm. year to recognize the gift that mm -hmm. we have mm -hmm. so um you want to close this out i'm gonna give it to you sure you know it's the new year all things are new are ahead of you love is a free gift forgiveness is a free gift take it own it use it if you want to ever reach out to me you can contact me at rchin r-c-h-i-n at solutionsforwinners.com because I believe in winning. I believe in taking action to win. So pardon the interruption if winning is not for you. But I aspire to say that, yeah, it probably is. So let's get together. Thanks. Thank you so much for closing us out. We, I'm not sure we're going to be on next week, but tune in just in case. And if I don't see you, have a wonderful, wonderful holiday. See you next time. Peace.
the Just a Bit Outside crew every Monday, 8 to 10 p.m. on uh, BeExposedRadio.com. You want to uh, start off? Um, I think I'll get it out of the way on a who's not. Okay, do it. The Orioles. Right, <laughs> right. They, they got swept by the Royals. They lost four in a row. And mm. uh, the last five games have all been decided by one run. Mm-hmm. Uh, the game before, or the, the last game that they lost before the Royals was uh, the Nationals and is a uh, uh, Weeders, of course. Mm-hmm. One, uh, one with a uh, home run, drove right, away, hit the uh, home run, hit the home right. Run. Um, they're going into that National Series. It seemed like they were doing so well, and they just they just crapped out. Um, uh-huh. They got that game postponed, so who knows when they're going to replay that or play that game? Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's my first knot for the night. Okay. Um, uh, uh, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and um, weigh in on my who's not, and I'm gonna talk about the San Diego Padres. The Padres. That's yeah. okay. Padres you just took my answer. Are <laughs> um, they're in last place in the NL West? Um, they've lost eight of their last ten. Their run differential is a negative sixty-five, um, which is just horrible. So when you have uh, when when well, let me just uh, talk about run differential a little bit. It's it's kind of like the um, you how much like you're ratio, you're winning or losing uh, your games by, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. It's like the margin of victory, kind of. Right. So um, when you're in a negative number, that that means that you know you're. Then your average game, you're losing by a whole lot. Right. I mean, a number like negative sixty-five, you know, this early into the in the season is 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 pretty rough. That's and horrible. The uh, the pitching numbers pretty much um, support this uh, 